the people to hear the truth what is going on about Palestinian people in 1948 because most of the people in America just they hear in TV the newspaper they read just one side they didn't read another side this where where is the truth it's not right to prevent Palestinians from farming their lands or restricting a student's ability to move around the West Bank or displace Palestinian families from their homes neither occupation nor expulsion is the answer my mom she saw six words in her life she's the care of 13 kids she's born in Haifa Palestine she fled uh, in 1948 in Israel they started war there they attacked her village with tents with bombs they killed many people She met her village, she, fl she left uh, her neighborhood when she was a child and the life in Iraq is not easy. So this, this time when Saddam Hussein is, is president, we had like a good life with the, Iraqi people, we felt safety there, and we went to, to school. But another side from the government forbidden to buy a home or a car or a phone or uh, to be citizenship. I don't have citizenship Iraqi, or you can't vote. We, I was born in Baghdad, capital, called Al Karada. Uh, we had wonderful life with Iraqi people. When I was a child, like nine years, there is uh, like three, three blocks in our neighborhood. There is many uh, gallery. Sometimes I walk, I sitting in front of the paintings. I say, how the people, they make that? And I wish to do that in the future. He's an incredible artist. And one thing about his art is that when you look at it, as I said, when he starts out first, it's, it's a very basic sketch, as if it's drawn by a kid. And then he blows your mind away when he's done. I love this beautiful painting he did of an elderly woman smiling uh, right into the eyes of the viewer. And it's named Wisdom because I think, you know, these elderly refugee women, like his mother, who survived so much and yet still have joy in their faces when they smile is incredible. I feel when I was a child, something inside me, I have to, to take my feelings outside. If I saw something uh, in TV or uh, in front of me, I have to paint it. I want my feelings comes out, something strong. Also, I like to, to show the people. We have been told that this is the start of what the Pentagon is now calling A Day, the letter A the start of the aerial bombardment, a massive air campaign expected over the next 24 to 48 hours. After 2003, when the America entered to Iraq, started the war, and after 2003, there are not safety uh, in Iraq, especially the, the militia, Shia, they started to kill Palestinian people. This website, uh, like volunteer, uh, 
um, they make this because we don't have media, don't have div TV, TV or newspaper. Just f some people volunteer. They make this. Anything happen, they put any news about them. I told you example. My mother when she was arrived here, I put this the good news. I told you we had contact with all the Palestinian people in Iraq. Yeah. Look, look, many people here are dying. And then after the war started, I joined a group called Christian Peacemaker Teams, which is um, um, a group, it's not evangelical, it's a Christian group founded by the three traditional peace churches, which are Quaker, Mennonite, and Church of the Brethren. And CPT works in areas of violence around the world to do nonviolent resistance at the invitation of local groups. I was there between December 2003 until December 2005, and Iraq changed tremendously during that time. Um, when I first got there, I could walk around wearing American clothes and not be afraid. But in 2004, with the bombing of Fallujah, after that, tensions rose against foreigners and uh, it wasn't safe for me to go outside anymore. I used to wear a head covering and pretty much disguise myself. Before I go to the Syria, I meet Sheila and her friends. They work together. They visit uh, my neighborhood. And then some people, they, to they told them about me. And then I gave, her, I gave them all information about Palestinian in Iraq, what happened. And then uh, I told them, if you want to help us, just go with us to the border in Syria. But the mission that I did with Thar was the most, what I felt was the most dangerous thing that I did in Iraq. Because we were getting on these buses with Palestinians who were targeted people going through the Anbar province, which for us as foreigners was the most dangerous. And we knew that we'd be stopped um, by the Iraqi mil military along the way. However, the Iraqi military was heavily infiltrated by Shia militias. So we didn't know when we were stopped at the checkpoints what would happen. And our job was to try to keep the Palestinians safe through these checkpoints and to get in the way if they were threatened. Once we got through the checkpoints, we knew that going through the Anbar province, which was more of a Sunni area, uh, we as foreigners would be more unsafe if the bus were stopped. And I'll never forget what Thayer said to me. He said, you ju just get us through the checkpoints, the military checkpoints, and after that, we'll be human shields for you, we'll protect you. First, when we stayed in the border, uh, 2005, in October, and then I told you the government, Syria, didn't enter to Syria because we, ha we had travel documents. And then we stayed in the border 40 days. It was very, very cold. We don't have nothing. So we're in this lot, you know, about a few hundred yards off the highway um, in three tents that the UN had provided. And we would go, the, there was like a border cafeteria and we could get two meals a day there. But it was dangerous because you never know who's crossing this border. When they wanted CR, they came from Syria to the border. And then we explained to them about what happened about Palestinians in Iraq. And then they gave us three tents, two families and one tent. And in the middle, a blanket. So as a foreigner, I didn't really feel safe on the border, but I didn't feel terribly afraid either. Um, I felt that we had gotten the refugees to a relatively safe place. We stayed with them for two weeks there on the border, mostly making phone calls all day long to different human rights groups and to the UN and trying to advocate for them to go into Syria. Uh, at night, uh, we make a fire because it's cold 
and we sit around the fire and then we sing Arabic and English and we drink coffee at night or tea and at night we saw the moon and this is in the morning we play soccer and football and also uh, like uh, I told you for me about Sheila we fall in love in the desert he was really giving everything for what he believed and he had so much energy and compassion and he was so wonderful with the children I noticed that right away they loved him and he would go and like give the moms a break he'd take the kids away and go play with them and um, I don't know, it was just his passion and willingness to risk everything to help his community. And then, after 2005, the government, they give our permission to enter to Syria north with UNCR. We stayed in the refugee camp in Syria called al Hol, the camp of refugee. Sheila, she tried to help us. And then when she visited me two times, uh, uh, the, the security police, they watching me. They thought I am CIA because she's American. They put me in the prison 70 days. I've been trying to reach him for several days and there was no answer. I was really worried. And I remember talking with my family and they would say, oh, it, it, it'll be fine, it's just bad reception. Because, you know, that would happen. But I just had this feeling that something was wrong. And then Thar's brother called me and said Thar is in prison. And I just was a wreck. They torched me, they put me in the hot, cold water in the winter. I felt I will die because I can't breathe. And then they touched me with with cable. They put my foot inside the tile. Yeah, they, they asked me many questions. How did you meet Sheila? How did you, why you went to USA embassy? Like many stupid questions. It was terrible. I mean, we were in the middle of the fiancé visa process when he was in prison. That was partly why he was in prison, because of his relationship with me. They asked him about me when they were torturing him. They knew my name. They knew that I was American. They assumed that I worked for the CIA. My phone would ring in the middle of the night, and I'd pick it up and say, hello, 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 and there'd be nothing. Sheila, she knew I had contact with her on phone. And then she tried to help me all my, uh, when I was in the prison. Yeah, and then she called the UNCR, she called Human Rights Amnesty International in London, and she tried to help me, yeah. We'd started the fiancé visa process in Syria, and Thayer was deported back to Iraq. And at the time, it was impossible to get a visa from Iraq. There was no process. There was no way to do it. There was no way to apply at the Baghdad embassy because anybody who wanted a visa had to apply in Jordan at the time. He couldn't get to Jordan because he was Palestinian. He couldn't cross that border. I lived all, uh, almost two years in Syria, and then they sent me to the Iraq. And then I decided I will teach the kids. And then many kids around me, we don't have a power like um, electricity. We don't have fan. It's very hot in summer. We don't have paper or good colors. He had an entire gallery. He painted on black velvet because there was no canvas. But he, and, but you know, in the village nearby, there were cheap paints available. Um, cheap oil paints and brushes, and I'd also sent him some from the States. So he just, he just did it. Then when I teach the kids, the kids are so happy. Why? Because the feelings comes out. 
this special uh, like medicine for the kids. In this moment, yeah, what can I do? I want to just go any country. And then I went to the Baghdad secret. And then I decided I will go through the airport. I feel like a like dream. How can I enter this, like an airport? Because all the people, Iraqi people, I am Palestinian, and then the passport is fake. If they know I'm, I'm Palestinian, uh, how, what will happen? Even if I went to Iraq and married him there, I would not have been able to legally get him to the United States. So he had to flee Iraq again, and he went to Turkey. I don't have all, I told you, on, when I was born in Iraq, I don't have a passport. I don't, ha I don't have a country. Uh, like, uh, I'm nothing. I need paper, I need ID, I need uh, to travel. I, I feel I want, I want to be human. Yeah, but this is when I have a, a passport fake, uh, makes me sad. Stayed one month to looking for smuggler. I want to go to Greece because all the migrants they went to Greece through the Turkey. Twenty-three people in the boat, small boat. Like uh, then we drove from Azmir to Mytilene, in Greece. Three hours. It's really hard, actually. It's really hard. When I was in the Middle East, everyone used to say to me, how can you be here so far away from your family? Because family is so important. And actually, when the plane landed, at the moment of landing, he started to cry. He, and he said he felt like he, his roots were torn out. And I don't think until the plane landed, that he, he realized that part of it. That yes, he was safe. Yes, we were together, finally. Home. It's almost as if he wants to go back to the life of the camp among these people, even if they, they are living in suffering. But it's almost as if th th that became a better life than dealing with culture shock here. I don't have friends. I felt homesick. Then I saw the weather, there is snow. We don't have snow in Iraq. Language so difficult is not easy. I want to do something. I want to study. This is my, my dream also. I didn't study in, in Iraq. I didn't go to college. I felt uh, the IIC like the second family with them because also they give me a chance to talk about, about uh, my life in front of the people. It's kind of a constant presence. He'll do things like um, share his artwork uh, at uh, cultural events we're having or speak at an event about his story. And um, art is a really great way of communicating stories. So we've always sort of embraced that and encouraged it. We provide classes preparing people to become United States citizens. Uh, that class also has an emphasis on what it means to be an engaged and active citizen. When the IIC helped me, about when I passed citizenship, uh, I told you I have no life. Then something happened to me in my feelings. Oh, I am citizen now. I, I can't travel. I, I will get the passport real. I couldn't believe. And the other thing that, that, that 
got me to to respect him even more is that he all all that time he had left his mom in the camp so he came here but he never forgot that his mission hasn't finished by coming to the US he needs to make uh, his he miss he needs to make life better for his mom who is still left in the camp quickly i got the ticket i i flew uh, in, uh, in turkey i saw her family here when my son's born he's so happy he pay with my mother he's just social socially my son Papa, put me on the marry the love Baba turned off the marry the love you did you did was it true yes oh but did you like it yes good I missed you. Did you miss me too? Yes. His story is not just survival, it's survival and celebration. He always says, life is beautiful and it continues no matter what, even if you've suffered a lot. You know, I felt I did a good job. Uh, I need like people to work with me. I have many ideas, I have many projects, but you know, I'm still learning English. It's not easy to tell the people what's inside me, my feelings. Uh, I told you sometimes it's heavy to tell the people. Sometimes I felt I did a good job to help my people.